I have an odd relationship at this point with comedy. And I don't mean like comedy films. I mean like doing comedy. Stand up. Getting up on stage and just trying to make people laugh. I have a little bit of an odd relationship with it at this point. For a number of reasons. I used to take in a lot of stand-up and various other forms of stage comedy. I briefly tried to do it myself when I was in New York. I actually don't think it was that bad. The issue was more I didn't have the ability to write new material week over week. And like, I realized that early enough and I'm just like, eh, no, let's, uh, let's bail. <coughs> Plus the, um, the stand-up comedy system in New York, at least at the time I was there, was incredibly predatory. It was built to prey on the people trying to break in, but that's a whole other conversation. But I've always enjoyed stand-up comedy. I kind of fell in love with it back when I discovered um, George Carlin uh, when I was in, uh, I guess, eighth grade or so. Um, but I really loved that, and I've loved a variety of stand-up comics. I don't watch all that much anymore. But every now and then, I'll still get sucked in, and it's not uncommon when I do, I'll talk about it. I've talked about several of Hannah Gadsby's specials. I talked about Bo Burnham's Inside. I haven't talked about John Mulaney before. But he has a new special out on Netflix. And it's good. It's, but it's, it's, interesting to talk about, I think. Because his previous, I'd say previous two specials were better in terms of being funny. They were funnier. However, funny is not the only measure of a comedy special. Um, I, I have praised the heck out of Hannah Gadsby's Nanette and continue to take a fair bit of crap for that. And that is not a pure comedy show. Anyone who says it's not comedy at all is wrong. Huge sections of it are hilarious. The last 20 minutes is absolutely not comedy. But she also tells you when she has told the last joke of the show and then keeps going. So, like, anyway, this isn't about her. She has a new special coming out soon. I, I probably will be talking about that when I get to it. But in terms of just making me laugh and giving me that, that good, relaxed feeling that I get from great stand-up, Mulaney's previous two specials did it better. But at the same time, I'm not sure how much I can criticize this for that. Because given what has happened to his public persona, I'm not sure he could have gotten away with making anything other than what he did. So for those of you who don't follow comedy and don't know who John Mulaney was, um, over the last few years, basically, uh, once the pandemic kicked off, he had a number of things that go really south in his life. He, he ended up in rehab. He, um, he got a divorce, uh, from his wife and it really kind of shook up people's image of him because while he had talked before about having a drinking problem, it was always referred to in his standups as something that he used to do. So there was this perception that he didn't do that anymore. And realizing that he did and seeing the impact on his on the rest of his life when, you know, having a very adorable and fairly stable marriage was part, also part of his image. This is always part of the risk when you make certain aspects of your personal life part of your public persona. Because, you know, if you've built a brand on a specific perception and the reality shifts, well, suddenly something that should be a private matter hits your public life much harder than it probably should. But if you've tied part of your your public persona to that thing, well, yeah, that's going to be what happens. And as I said, I don't think he could have done anything other than this special. Almost. I'll kind of get to that. Which is that pretty much this entire thing is him addressing in some ways what had gone on. And with the massive focus, I would say actually almost the exclusive focus, being on his issues with drugs. He talks about his friends having an intervention for him. He talks about entering into a room 
that was full of his friends who were some of the funniest people alive and nobody was there to tell a joke. And he makes it personal. And there are jokes in there. There is some stuff that's funny. And as I said, he kind of had to address this because I think if he'd just shown up and just done his normal set, I think people would have gone, what the hell, man? You know, you're ignoring the elephant in the room. And it's it's not an easy thing to get away with doing that. But at the same time, there was something that I couldn't help but notice. And it felt like a diversion. Because like I said, he spends pretty much the entire special talking about his substance abuse issues and things related to that. How he, you know, how he would go from seeing his drug dealer, like he had gone to see his drug dealer immediately before going to his intervention because he didn't know it was it was going to be an intervention and talking about being in rehab and talking about the fact that he got really annoyed that nobody in rehab recognized him. And that was one of the funnier bits. But it's all about the drugs. And the thing is, while this is... A little bit of conjecture on my part because I didn't really pay that much attention to the fallout from his last few years. But it certainly seemed like to me his fans were a lot more shaken up and torn up about his marriage ending than they were about the fact that he had a drug relapse. Because, as I said, him talking about his wife was a fairly regular part of his bit, which made people invested in that relationship. And while I feel kind of scummy, like trying to dig up much about it, from what I could tell on a surface level scan of things, her indication has been that he decided to end the marriage and that she would have preferred to keep working on things. Now, if she said anything different since... Those quotes were made, like, I don't know. As I said, there was only so far I was willing to dig into this. It just strikes me as extremely calculated to put out a special that focuses entirely on one aspect of a controversy around how people have perceived you and what's going on in your life while completely ignoring the other one. I kind of get the impression that maybe we're meant to... Guys, I think he mentions that he got divorced at one point, but he never gets into that. And again, he's not necessarily obligated to. It's his personal life. If he wants to keep it private, that's fine. That's his right to do so. But it can't help but strike me as slightly odd that he would be so open and so frank about this while very carefully avoiding the thing that a lot more people seem to be shaken up by and didn't know what to think. And I think it feels like we're meant to infer that the drugs were what ended his marriage. But again, the quotes I can find from his ex-wife don't lean that way. The general indication was that she was caught off guard when he asked for a divorce. So again, I don't actually really want to know about John Mulaney's personal life. Ultimately, I don't care. And as I said, he's certainly not obligated to answer questions about that. It is his personal life. It's not just his, it's hers as well. So to the extent at which it would actually even be a good idea to build a set around that, yeah, that might not be a great idea. And this might honestly have been the best thing he could have done out of the options available to him. It just struck me as odd to do something this confessional, make it feel like it was addressing, you know, laughing at the problems I've had and addressing the controversy. I get to talk about it so no one else can say anything. And to just skip over what, again, seemed to me to be the much bigger issue. At least that was the impression I got when when all this broke. And again, maybe my impression is just wrong. Maybe people were more thrown off by the drugs. I don't know. And I'm not saying this to be like, oh, he's secretly a massive raging asshole and he's he's hiding stuff. I don't don't know. 
I don't know. I'm interested in talking about this for the same reason that I talk about the PR mindset and the PR fallout from when people like Gina Carano get fired or Johnny Depp gets fired or people call for Amber Heard to get fired, but she doesn't. I talk about that stuff not because I actually care that much about these people on a personal level. I really don't. But I do find the, the public relations machine and the thought process behind what powers it, I find interesting to think about and interesting to talk about. And this feels very calculated. This feels like a deliberate choice to address this and not talk about that. And I'm not gonna pause it as to why. There's any number of possible reasons as to why. As I said, maybe it involves a level of vulnerability that he's not comfortable with. Maybe it involves personal details that it's not fair for him to reveal about his ex-wife. Maybe it's just flatly nobody's business. Maybe it's a story where he he looks like even more of an asshole than he does in the drug ones. I don't know. Neither does anyone else, except him and maybe his ex-wife. But this isn't even really a review of the special, which again, it's fine. It's pretty good. It's decent. I just kept waiting for him to talk about what always seemed like the bigger issue. And he never did. And ultimately, by the end of the year and with a new special out after this where he isn't obligated to talk about any controversy, he'll probably just pick up right where he left off. So from a completely career management perspective, this probably was the smartest thing he could have done. I just always find it interesting to note what got skipped over for the sake of PR, maybe. And maybe, again, maybe it's just sake of privacy, who knows. But I have some, at least I think I do, some understanding of public relations and the mindset behind it, and I find it interesting to dissect. I was going to ask, did you see the special and what did you think about it? Yeah, I mean, heck, I'll ask that anyway. Did you see the special and what did you think about it? Even though I didn't really talk about the contents of the thing, like, at all, barely. But (laughs) whatever your thoughts on anything I had to say, drop them down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Patreon pays the bills. Enables me to talk to you about this kind of nonsense on the regular. Um, but even if you can't help me out that way, like, share, subscribe are also a big help. And, uh, even if you can't do that, don't worry about it because we take relaxed attitude around here and you can just come on back next time you need a break. Massive thanks to my Patreon supporters, and in particular, I want to thank Robin Moore, Zubin Lutfulla, Tarak, the thing that goes doink in the anime, Ruth, Oliver B, Solitary Pictures, Ulrich Bogdan, Melinda Walters, Jen, The Oath of Boyd, Auntie Kate 808, Becky Sparks, Pranabi Lacks the Poodle, Robin Powell, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casper, Adam R. D. L. Taylor, David Hall, Shayla Gourlay, and Rosalind Bennett. Thanks for your support. You can get your name in the credits too if you feel like hearing me possibly struggle with it for several times before getting it right. 